Hi, I'm Gia from Yarn Nut, and today we are starting our crochet along for the All Seasons Reversible Cotton Quilt. This is square number one, it is the diamond square, and this is a fillet crochet pattern that I found online that is no longer being published, so I'm putting a link to the creator and the pattern description in the description box of this video. It was a 12 inch square that I modified to five and a half inches to match the other squares in this quilt. I'm using a three weight cotton yarn from Ice Yarns called Jeans. You of course can be using any yarn you like. I'm using an E crochet hook, three and a half millimeters, and you'll need a darning needle and a pair of scissors. I've already made 10 squares in my winter color, which is copper in the Jeans yarn for the winter side of the quilt. And I have made nine of the candy pink squares for the summer side. And today we're gonna make our last candy pink square and I'm gonna show you how to make it. Okay, to get started, I'm gonna do a magic loop. And I'm doing a magic loop because I'm closing up the holes in the center of my squares for this project. It's just my design plan. If you'd like to leave them open, you definitely can. I would just suggest leaving them uniformly sized on each square so that it all looks the same. You can also use the chain method with a slip stitch. We're going to be doing four groups of three double crochets, so you shouldn't need too many chains. Through the magic loop, I'm going to hold the yarn in my hand like this, and I'm going to secure the end with my thumb. I'm going to turn my hand over so that the yarn wraps around my forefinger. Then I'm going to take the yarn and wrap it again in an X, and secure the other side with my pinky. It's going to free up my other hand to make the loop. Put your hook underneath the hook on your finger. Grab the back yarn and pull it through underneath the loop. And I'm gonna do a quick chain three to secure the loop and to start my next row. Take your finger out and I always unwind the tail so it doesn't get caught. Tighten everything up and this is what you have and you're ready to go. First row, you're gonna do two more double crochets in that loop and you're going to crochet over the tail of the magic loop. Chain three for your corner. All corners will be chain three. Then you're going to do three more double crochets. Now a double crochet is basically, that's the American term, I believe it's called a triple in British terms. You're going to yarn over, put your hook in the center loop, pull it back through so you have three loops on the hook yarn over and you're just going to go through two loops and then through two loops again and that is a double crochet. That's it. Very simple. Three double crochets, chain three for the next corner, three more double crochets. And if your center loop is too large, you're having trouble hanging on to everything, just pull it in a little bit leave room for the rest of your stitches. Two, three, so I'm gonna chain three for my next corner. I'm gonna do one last group of three double crochets. Now, instead of doing a chain three for this corner, we're gonna join in the corner. I really like corner joining because it's invisible and it makes everything look so neat. So I'm gonna chain one, and then we're going to join with a half double crochet in the top chain of your first three chains in your first beginning of your first row. I try to go through two loops so it's nice and secure. Half double crochet. This puts you in the middle of your corner to start your next row. Chain three to start your next row. So we've already done our chain three for the beginning of the next row. We're going to do one more double crochet in that corner. These corners are going to be two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets. Then we're going to cro double crochet in each of the next three double crochets in the previous row. Second one sometimes is a little tricky to find. After that chain one.
So you have two, three, and two for seven. Chain three for the corner. Two double crochets in that same corner. Chain three in the next double crochet in each of the next three double crochets. Two double crochets in the next corner. So you have again seven. Chain three. Continue all the way around until you get to the corner and we'll do that same corner join with one chain and a half double crochet and I'll meet you over there. Okay, so when you have completed row two, that is seven double crochets on each side with a chain three in each corner. We're gonna join in the corner with a chain and a half double crochet in the top of the chain three of the beginning of the row. Chain three again to start your next row. I always recommend taking a look at every row before you move on just to make sure you didn't miss any stitches or put in too many stitches because I hate going back and you know undoing three or four rows when you find a mistake. So I highly recommend looking at each row when you're finished just to make sure that everything's good. Sometimes I start watching TV and I get a little carried away and I get too many stitches in one row or I miss stitches. So then I have to pull it out and I get really aggravated. <laughs> so I would recommend whenever you finish a row, you know, do your chain three. Just take a look. Did I miss anything? Count if you need to. See if you have anything that looks strange. Do I have any weird splits that I want to fix? And then when you think it's okay, move on. Okay, to start row three, we already did our three chain beginning. And we're going to do one more double crochet. This row is also going to be a solid fillet. You want to follow along with the square. This is what we're doing. So the first three rows are completely solid except for the corner. So we're going to repeat row three exactly like row two. And we're going to put one double crochet in the corner. So you have one double crochet and your beginning chain. Then you're going to do one double crochet in each of the next double crochets. And you got to watch that second one's a little tricky next to the chain three. Um, that top loop seems to be kind of folded. So it's real easy to skip that second one. See how it looks a little bit strange. So it's real easy to skip this one. So just watch because that's where I usually miss. Got to kind of dig for that hole a little bit on that one. It's something to do with being next to the chain three. But I've missed that quite a bit. <laughs> oh, so relaxing. I love this color. This color is great. Let me know what color you're using. I'd really like to know. So now we have two. We have our beginning chain chain and our double crochet in the corner. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double crochets in the double crochets on the previous row. Then we're going to do two more double crochets in the next corner. So now on this row, we're going to have nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I take it back. 11. We're going to have 11 double crochets on each side with chain three on the corners. two double crochets in the corner. So go ahead and repeat that all the way around, 11 doubles on each side, chain three in the corners, and I'll meet you back at the end of the row and we'll join in the corner again. Okay, once you get to the end of row three, you should have 11 double crochets on each side with the chain threes in the corner. Again, when you get to the corner, join. Before we join, just double check and make sure you haven't missed any stitches. Make sure your pattern looks good. Chain one and half double crochet in the top of the first chain three beginning. And again, that puts us in the center of the corner, which is really nice to work in. This join is invisible and I love it. Now, this is where we start making our diamond pattern. You can see on this square, our first three rows are solid. On the next row, we're going to have a chain two space right after your corner two double crochets. That's going to start the diamond pattern going up in the top. 
So we're going to chain three as usual, double crochet in the same corner. So we have our beginning chain three and our double crochet. Then we are going to chain two, and then we're going to skip two, one, two, and we're going to double crochet in the third double crochet from your corner. Then we're going to double crochet across one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to leave the last two as our skip, chain two double crochet in the corner, actually two double crochets in the corner. So this is what you should look like. You should have your two, your beginning chain three and a double crochet in the corner, chain two, skip two double crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, double crochets in the next, chain two, skip the last two, two double crochets in the corner. We're going to do that all the way around. I'll do it one more time with you chain three in the corner, two double crochets in the corner, chain two, skip two, seven double crochets, one in each of the next seven in the previous row. Like I said, if you have a splitty yarn, sometimes the cotton can be splitty. Make sure you're wrapping your needle all the way around and hooking it all the way under the hook. Then you won't have any splitting issues. Chain two, skip the last two double crochets, two double crochets in the corner. Go ahead and repeat that around until you get to the end. We'll do our corner join and move on to row four. Okay, so I've gone all the way around the row and we are back at the corner. I'm going to do a chain one half double crochet in the top chain of your beginning chain three in the beginning of the row. Find the right spot. There we go. Once again, I'm going to do a chain three to start the next row. Then I'm just going to take a look and make sure that I didn't skip any spaces. You should have a two double crochets, chain three, and then you should have a square space in each, next to each side of the corner. So it looks like I didn't miss any. <laughs> looks good. Let's move on. So now that we've finished our row and checked it out, we're going to move on to row five. Double crochet in the corner next to your three chain beginning. You're going to double crochet in each of the double crochets in the previous row. Then we're going to do two double crochets and splitties. Sometimes the split will go back down. Sometimes you got to pull it out and start over. Now we're going to do two double crochets in the chain two space from the row below. Now we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to chain three and we're going to do a three together double crochet. That's three double crochets that are clustered together so that it makes this little point in the square. Three, three double crochet cluster, I think that's called. So chain three, skip your first two. In the third double crochet, you're going to start your double crochet just as normal. You'll have three loops on the hook. Just yarn over and go through two. Leave these two on the hook. Yarn over. Same thing in the next one. You're going to have four loops on the hook. Yarn over and go through two. Now one more time. Yarn over. Go into the next double crochet. Now you're going to have five loops on the hook. Yarn over and go through two.
that's going to leave you four loops on the hook. So now you're going to yarn over and you're actually going to go through all four loops and pull it. That is going to create your cluster of three double crochets, which makes the point of your diamond. So as you can see, you just started your first diamond point. So much fun. Now we're going to chain three again. The reason we're chaining three on these instead of chain two, because when you're bringing this cluster in on the top, it's pulling the point in. So if you have a chain two instead of a chain three, you're going to find that row is going to be a little bit tight and it's going to start puckering. So we want to chain three next to your clusters. So after you finish your cluster, chain three again, skip the last two double crochets and two double crochets in the chain space from the row below. And then two double crochets, one in each of the next double crochets. And then two double crochets in your corner. All right, so you're gonna have two, four, six double crochets, five including in on your three chain start. Chain three, three double crochet cluster in the next three. Skip the next two. Six double crochets across, two in the space, two in one in each of the double crochets, and two in the corner. And that's your side. I'll repeat that one more time with you, and then we'll finish up this row. Chain three for your corner two double crochets in the corner space, one double crochet in each of the next double crochets, lost it there, I'm trying to hurry, <laughs> one more double crochet there, one double crochet, sorry, two double crochets in the next chain two space, chain three, Skip the first two, start your double crochet cluster in the next one, go through the first two loops of your double crochet, leaving two on the hook, yarn over one more time, four loops on the hook, go through two only, leaving three, one more time, yarn over, go into the next double crochet, yarn over, and go through two loops. We have four. Now we're going to complete our cluster by yarning over, going through all four loops chain three. Now we just did our second diamond point. I really do like this pattern. I think it's so fun. It goes, works up pretty quickly. So we're going to skip the last two double crochets, two double crochets in that chain space, one double crochet in each of the next two double crochets, two double crochets in the corner. Okay, so now go ahead and complete the next two sides exactly the same way, and then I'll meet you on the other side of the row. Okay, so I got to the other side of the row, and as you can see, I'm going to do my corner join again. Chain one, half double crochet in the top of chain three at the beginning of the row. All right, now I'm going to check and make sure I didn't miss anything. See how great these corner joins look? You can't really even see them. I love it. But I'm going to make sure that my diamond pattern is going back in. Did I miss any holes? Doesn't look like it. It's so easy to do. <laughs> All right, let's go on with row six. We're going to chain three. We're going to do our double crochet in the same space. We're going to double crochet in each of the next double crochets, which is six. Don't forget that first one. Sometimes that chain three hides from the row underneath. Right, then we're going to do two double crochets in our chain three space. Now we're going to do chain two 
over our cluster, two double crochets on the other side of the cluster in that chain three space. Just completing our diamond pattern there. Double crochet in each of the next six. One in each of the ones below. I really wish I could be doing this with you guys. It'd be so fun to have someone to talk to. <laughs> Splitting, grabbing it. There we go. Six. Two double crochets in the corner. All right, chain three in your corner space. And then two double crochets in the same space to start the other side of the row. We're going to double crochet in each of the double crochets below. Two double crochets in the chain three space. Chain two over the cluster. Skip it. Two double crochets on the other side of the cluster in the chain three space. Six double crochets across. One in each in the one row below. Two double crochets in the corner. Chain three. Start it all over again. So go ahead and go all the way around. And I'll meet you back on the end of this row. Okay, so now we have finished row six. And it should look like this. Should have one space over your cluster in the row five and all the rest should be double crochets except for the three chains in the corner. So spread it out. Make sure you didn't miss anything. Check your diamond patterns. And if all is well, we'll move on to row seven. All right, let's start row seven, which is really going to be all double crochets. So we're going to chain three for your first beginning. Double crochet in the same space. We're going to do 10 double crochets, one in each of the double crochets in the row below. Then you're going to do two double crochets in your chain two space. Then you're going to do 10 double crochets, one in each of the double crochets in your previous row up to your corner. Then in your corner, you're going to do two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets to turn your corner. Then we're going to repeat in the next three sides. 10, two, 10, two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets. 10 double crochets, two in this space, 10 double crochets. Same thing in the corner, all the way around. So go ahead and do that, and I will meet you back at our corner join. Okay, so now I have finished my row seven by doing my double crochets all the way around. And one more time, I'm gonna double check and make sure that I didn't mess anything up. All these squares are gonna have the X's in them, which I really like. It's gonna match up all through the blanket, which I thought added to the look a little bit. Looks like I did everything okay. So now I'm going to snip off my yarn. I'm going to give it, I always give it a couple inches. I'm paranoid about my ends coming out. So however you end your squares, go right ahead, but this is how I do it. I'm going to pull it through. Tighten up the knot. Then I'm going to weave it into the back loops of my top row just so I'll crochet over it later but that should make them nice and secure and if you're only going in the back loop it doesn't affect your stitches very much at all. That's your splitties. So again as far the far the distance you go is up to you again I'm like totally paranoid <laughs> I'll be wrapping these all the way around but I have actually I have a friend's blanket who she gave it to me to repair because whoever made it, they did a ripple stitch and they didn't work in their ends. They just knotted them. And it, the blanket's probably about 20 years old and the thing is just totally coming apart. So I'm going to try to repair it for her if I can. 
she really loves the blanket. It has a lot of memories for her. So make sure that you do take care of your ends really, really well because you don't want them coming out in 20 years when you've gifted the blanket and somebody loves it. So there we go. That square is complete. So please let me know if you have any questions on how to make this. Again, we're going to do 10 of each color on the reversible quilt. So I will get started on square two of the crochet along and we'll be putting that out in just a few days. So show me what you're doing. I really am excited to be doing this with you and thanks so much for watching. Bye.